Hi YouTube, just going to do a quick video on something I've been playing around with this little solar setup. So I've got some solar panels over there which are going to charge up some batteries, some little that's an AA battery charger and a lithium ion battery charger. So uh, what I wanted to do is just have the ability to charge those batteries from the sun offline separate from any any mains power and uh, be completely independent from the grid so uh, th this is done with a mind of building a larger system uh, possibly uh, feeding sort of household lighting and, and things like that but this is just a little experiment I've had with a small system obviously keep costs down and uh, just uh, see how it all works so I'll just explain what I've done what I've done is worked out how much power I need to, to use those two chargers. So uh, what I've got here is the power adapter for the Maha, which is an excellent charger by the way. And uh, if you can read on there it says output DC 12 volts and 2 amps. Um, obviously everything needs to be 12 volts off of this system. And uh, that's what most most lead acid batteries are, so it works well. And um, like I said, so we've got 12 volts, two amps. So to work that out, that's 24 watts, because you uh, take the voltage and multiply it by the current. So 12 by two is 24. So if we do that. That's one of them. Uh, this is the other adapter, which is for the lithium charger. And on there you've got an output rating of 12 volts, 1000 milliamps, so that's 1 amp. Uh, and that 12 by 1 is 12. So add those two together, we've got around about 36 watts. So uh, what I do just to, uh, just to see roughly what power I would need to run it without draining the batteries is to... Uh, size the solar panels a bit larger than that. What you've got to take into account is the solar panels uh, are probably going to be rated a, a little higher than they, they will actually produce. Um, so I've got 48 watt panels and um, I wouldn't expect them to make 48 watts. I think most sellers particularly, these are off eBay, so I think uh, most claims are a little optimistic, but let's say they do they do the right side of 40. And then uh, the next thing you've got to take into account is the charge controller. Because those solar panels are connected up in series and they feed on that little coil through the isolator into the charge controller and then the charge controller feeds the uh, chargers and the batteries. And um, what that does is takes the output from the solar panels, which are wired in series, and actually give around 50 volts and turns it into 12 volts. So there's an efficiency rating for the charge controller, which is not going to be 100%. So you're going to get losses there. So a 48 watt panel rated optimistically with, uh, I don't know, I'm guessing around 80% efficiency from the MPPT solar charger. Um, is going to be about right for a 36 watt draw. Um, I think I've definitely oversized it because the 36 watts is only going to be when those battery chargers are uh, charging to their full capacity so the batteries are completely flat and uh, they're full up with, with cells. But anyway that's what I wanted to be able to do so that's, that's the reason why I've gone for that size solar panel. So the next thing you should do is size your battery. Um, now the battery, best way to size a battery is to uh, take the wattage of your solar panel and uh, divide it by 12. So uh, on my one you've got 48 divided by 12 which is 4. And that's the current it should give out. Again, if it makes the optimistic value, that's the current it will give out 
at 12 volts for the batteries. So then take that number, which is 4, four amps, and multiply it by 10, so 40. And uh, that gives you a ideal sort of battery size. Now you can go bigger or larger. If you go larger, you'll risk not charging the batteries as quickly. And if you go much larger, that may mean the batteries don't charge properly and they'll sulfate and get damaged. If you put a smaller battery on there, you may charge them at too high a rate, in which case they'll vent um, and they'll dry out and damage themselves that way. So getting the battery back right is fairly important. And uh, then you need to work out the charge controller. So we've, we've already worked out the four amps charging the battery, so 40 amp per battery. And uh, we're gonna need a charge controller which is bigger than that. I would, I would go 50% uh, bigger than what you expect. So I've actually gone gone much bigger than that. I've gone for a 10 amp charge controller, uh, which is still reasonably cheap. Obviously, the larger you go, the more expensive they get. Now, uh, just a note on the charge controller, which is this unit here. There's two types you'll see, which is PWM, pulse width modulation, or the MPPT, which is maximum PowerPoint tracking. Now, the MPPTs are, are more efficient uh, but more expensive. So if you can afford it, go for one of those and uh, you'll get better efficiency out of the, out of the system. Okay, so let me just show you up close. So we've got the power in from the solar panel here. Uh, Brown's positive, blue's the negative. It's uh, DC voltage, obviously all, all solar equipment is DC unless you uh, use a inverter. So we've got the power coming in here, just goes through a little breaker, which uh, just allows me to isolate it and make sure this safe. This feeds into the charge controller, it's quite clearly labelled up plus and minus and a little picture of a solar panel. Uh, then we've got the main battery bank, which is the, uh, the standby batteries that I've got down the bottom along, along there. So that goes uh, through the battery isolator down and uh, connects onto them now. They're all connected in parallel, so they're 12 volt, a 12 volt bank of batteries. I've actually got quite a large bank of batteries on there, but I got them free, so I thought I'd use them all, keep them all charged up. And uh, that's what will power the output from this if we've got no sun available. So. In normal operation, the power will come in here, it will be converted from around about 50 volts down to 12 volts. That will go off to charge the battery, the main battery bank, and it will also go off and power my little AA charger, lithium charger. Now when the sun goes in, there will be no power coming from here. So this will then take power from the main battery bank, the big ones along the bottom, and carry on feeding these uh, these little chargers. So I've always got power available to the battery, little battery chargers. Um, as you can see, I've dummied up a little light, which uh, I test tested it with. It gives it a bit of load. But um, as it's such a rubbish day at the minute, all this is inside, and uh, it won't really produce any power if I stick it outside. So uh, let's turn it on, I'll just show you what happens. So that's feeding 12 volts from the battery up into the charge controller, which is then outputting it down here. It's just a car bulb that's feeding that. So uh, I'll pull a link out which powers that light. Now what I've done is just got some little adapters uh, got one lying about somewhere so that's, that's the type, they're just available on eBay actually for pennies, you've just got a little screw screw terminal there and that'll fit a lot of 12 volt devices 
around the house you can um, measure the diameter of the one you've got on your plug and compare it and just see that it is the right one but that's what I've done here I've just uh, connected them straight up and they plug in plug into the chargers they both take the same one luckily so uh, I'll pop that in there you'll see power comes on and, uh, pop that in there and that one will light up so, um, that's it really, I mean it's quite straightforward. And, uh, you know, it works well enough, it's worked, worked and charged up. The lithium states are fully charged, you can see by the green lights on them. And I've just ch charged up a full set of uh, any loops there. So, um, any questions you want to see any more, uh, just comment. Thanks for watching. Bye.